it's the second day of our tour here in Bolivia. And this is another sort of salt flat, but this is not sodium salt, this is boron. And we're here standing on some train tracks. They lead to Chile over there. They lead to Argentina on the other side. Um, and it's used mainly for transporting the boron that they're extracting over there. <laughs> and we are surrounded by several volcanoes, some of them active. This one is inactive and it's at the height of it is 5,500 meters. that I've ever been to wild flamingos. We're at the lagoon at around 4,200 meters height and there's two different types of flamingos, the Andean uh, flamingo and the Chilean flamingo. The depth of this lagoon in the deepest part in the middle is only 10 centimeters and on the sides it's only 5 centimeters and the color of the water is weirdly brown because of algas which live in there. I don't really have that much zoom on my phone. So, I'm going to try to sneak up on them a bit more. <laughs> so cool. We're so close to them. I don't even want to talk loudly because I'm afraid I'll scare them away. Oh man, this is beautiful. This lake is called the Stinky Lake. And it's called that because it has a real strong smell of sulfur. However, those llamas don't seem to care and they're drinking from the lake. So I guess it's not that poisonous. <laughs> and uh, the white stuff here, this is again boron. algae that are in the lagoon and the white parts that you can see are just again boron and right here there is a huge group of flamingos probably around 100 flamingos right there so i noticed that there's uh, certain spots where all the flamingos gather and i think the reason is that, that these are the spots where fresh water is coming and i assume that probably the water is not drinkable in the rest of the lake for them so they come to where the fresh water is coming to drink. So we've arrived to a canyon with uh, geysers and hot springs. The smell of sulfur is really strong in here. Um, however, it's become so cold that we really can't enjoy much anymore and we're going back in the car as soon as possible. It's 
shortly before sunrise and I couldn't sleep anymore. And there's hot springs in this village. So that's where I'm going. It's around quarter past seven. The sun is about to rise. I've been in the pool for 20 minutes. And it's really nice and warm. Even though the outside temperature is definitely below zero. <sighs> oh man, I'm steaming. So sad to, to have to leave the pool, but breakfast is about to start. My hair is frozen. <laughs> oh man. So behind here is the green lagoon. Right now it doesn't really look all that green because it's frozen, so it looks more white. The lava has really left some interesting rock formations around here. And who would have expected such an oasis in a place like this? We just saw a chinchilla and it scared me because it ran right next to my legs. But it's good. So a car in front of the bus uh, has been breaking down. It's broken down for the third time. Uh, we have a car mechanic on board, uh, one of the passengers, and he's trying to figure out what's wrong with that car, but it's not that easy, it seems. In the next episode, we're flying from La Paz to Cusco, where we're finally entering the heartland of the Incas.